Hey everyone and welcome to the Oaklers YouTube channel. In today's tutorial we are going to make a bag that has a technique that I have tried so many times over the last year and I have failed using other patterns, but this pattern is the only time it's worked out. <laughs> Today we're going to make the Aries crossbody bag and this comes to us from Knotted Threads. The technique I'm referring to is the curved zipper. Now we've done curved zippers that go like this, but the curved zipper that goes like this is a look that I see on bags in stores, bags that I've purchased all the time. I love the look. I have tried many other patterns and every single time I get these very wavy, wavy zippers. This is the first, this is the only time I've used a pattern that has this shape zipper and it actually worked out. So I am so excited to share this bag with you today. So the Aries crossbody bag can be made as a crossbody bag or you can use a shorter strap and make it a shoulder strap. I have done both. I love both. Obviously for me, I love a crossbody. I like something to go right across my body because I'm usually juggling kids, things, toys, water bottles, backpacks, things like that. So I love a crossbody. But this bag is a perfect everyday bag. So let's go over all the details. We have a front main panel. We have a back main panel. We have a gusset. This bag is not challenging. It might take you some time because there's there's not a lot of details, but there's a lot of really amazing techniques. You're gonna love this pattern so much, guys. There's a lot of amazing techniques to make this bag look perfect. You just have to take your time. So main, front, back looks very simple. Let's look at the top. On the top, we have two main zipper pockets and like a magnetic closure just open pocket in the center. I love this. This pocket right here also has a zipper pocket inside. So the middle pocket has a zipper pocket. And then you see on the top here, we have two very large size main compartments. So these are great for your wallet. The center pocket is obviously where I'd put my phone, where I'd put my grocery list, where I'd put just the things I have to access all the time, maybe my car keys. Then the side D-ring connectors are the cutest. Let me show you this. So look at that little D-ring connector. You see how it just wraps around the top and then we rivet it in place. We don't have a lot of bulk in the seams. Also, if you'll notice on the top here, we don't have a lot of like puckering, kind of that like butt look, you know, like where it's too thick, too much material at the seams. The techniques in this pattern are so good. They're so good. So let me just show you what this bag looks like on. So I seem to have lost my step stool, so I'm just gonna stand on my tiptoes. But for reference, I am five feet, four inches tall. I'm a size small or medium, usually medium. Um, and this is how the bag lays on me. Perfect crossbody size, very simple bag, very good everyday bag, not too bulky, not too small, just like, just the perfect everyday bag. So thank you so much to Knotted Threads for allowing me to use your pattern on my channel. I gotta tell you guys, this pattern is written so, so well. I mean, I go through a lot of patterns over here, okay? and and. They're all written differently. They're very, it's artistic, right? Every, every artist has a different style to writing their patterns, but this, the way that they write this pattern is just so good. There are jokes in there. There are pause points to like remind you to go do something. There's explanation for why you're doing things the way you're doing, because there are some little techniques here where you're kind of like, why are we doing it like that? That's not how I normally do it. And they explain it. They're like, this is why we do it this way. There's a method to the madness. Uh, and it turns out absolutely perfect. I've made a lot of bags guys, like a, like a lot of bags. And there are certain things that I just always know are going to happen. Like I'm always going to have very thick seams when I have a lot of layers coming together on these top corners. The pattern has instructions to avoid that, which I am just so stinking pleased by. So if you're new to the Oak Lords YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, leave them down in the comment section. Go check out the Knotted Threads patterns, their website. There are a lot of beautiful patterns on there. Let me know if there's one you'd like to see. Some are more industrial sewing machine friendly. Some are more domestic friendly. This is definitely a domestic friendly pattern. I had no problems with bulk or anything like that on my domestic sewing machine. All right, guys, let's get started. So for this little bag, you're going to need a full roll of vinyl. So a full roll is at least 12 inches wide. I always like to get the 18 inch wide rolls, but at least 12 inches wide and about 54 inches long. Um, if you're using quilt cotton or anything like that, you will want like a yard of fabric. And this is for the exterior. If you're using quilt cotton, you're going to want to really increase your stabilizer too because vinyl or faux leather is recommended today. I have kind of a light to medium weight vinyl faux leather combo. I'm going to use this for the main panel and I'm going to use this fun solid for the gusset. I always like to mix it up like that. 
You're going to need at least a quarter yard of your lining fabric. I'm gonna be using a water resistant canvas because I don't have to put any woven interfacing on it. If you're using quilt cotton, which you can definitely do, you're gonna to wanna to use some woven interfacing on all the quilt cotton pieces. So fusible fleece, depending on how thick your exterior material is, is optional in my opinion. I have made a version of this bag with no fusible fleece and it turned out very nice, but the fusible fleece does actually offer a lot more structure to the bag. So I highly recommend you use fusible fleece. You're gonna need about a quarter yard of that. If you want, you could use Decoville Light instead, uh, especially if I was using quilt cotton, I think I might use Decoville Light to give the quilt cotton more of like a faux leather feel. You're gonna need at least half a yard of woven interfacing. I'm not using any because I'm not using any woven material, but any quilt cotton you're using, you're gonna need woven interfacing on. That includes the exterior. So if you're using a woven material for the exterior, you're gonna want even more than half a yard to accommodate for that. And then just some scraps of Decoville Light. Um, I just have some scraps here. This is going to be for magnet installation and just little bits for the top of the interior gusset. So here's most of our hardware. I'm using three quarter inch strap material today. So my crossbody strap is going to be three quarters of an inch wide. So I have two swivel hooks, two D rings, and one strap slider. And this is all three quarter of an inch wide. I have a magnetic snap here. Now you can see my magnetic snap. It has a female and male end, but I don't use the prongs. So I have little caps on here. I actually use my rivet press to press these in place. I really like this because I don't have to worry about the back of these magnets scraping against material. So a lot of times with the prongs, you have to cover them or else they will wear down the material that's on the back side of it. With these smooth rivets, it protects it much better. And then you're gonna need four sets of rivets. So I have my rivets here. I have an interior bag tag, which is really fun, an exterior bag tag, which is gonna be a metal one, three zipper pulls, and then a nice long piece of number five zipper tape. You're gonna need at least 27 and a half inch of zipper tape. All right, we have a lot of other stuff today. I'm using a lot of tools. Um, you don't need all these tools, but it is very helpful to have this. So let's start with, of course, lots and lots of clover clips. For my top thread, I have a Tex 45 weight thread. This is called Dementor's Kiss. It's from Wizardry Stitchery. It is variegated. It goes from like white to gray to black, which I thought would be fun for this bag. For my bobbin thread, so this is a thread here that goes through the needle. For the bobbin thread, I have my Guterman thread. This is from Joann's. And then the needle I'm using today is a Microtex 8012. I have this adorable rainbow hole punch. And then I have a seam roller. The seam roller is very helpful when working with vinyl and we need to smooth out some edges, which we will need to do on those curvy zippers. Uh, we don't wanna use an iron. So the seam roller is very handy. And then I have my rivet press and I'm using this specifically for the magnetic snaps. So if you're using the prong magnetic snaps, you don't need this giant rivet press. I just, I just have it, so I'm using it. And so I have my two dies and my top die that go with that. I have two double-sided tapes here. I have a quarter inch and eighth of an inch double-sided tape. I find both very helpful in this pattern. A one inch by six inch ruler, a lighter for cleaning up edges. My marking tool of choice with all this material is a silver ink marking pen. And then I have my edge coat painter, which we'll go over the edge coating in just a moment. I have a stiletto that is just gonna help me hold everything in place at the sewing machine. Next, I have some beacon three-in-one glue. And then I have another rivet press here. You don't, you don't need two rivet presses. One or the other will be fine. Um, I just find that this handheld one, which is called the tabletop one, but I use it as a handheld one. I use this for the, the rivets. I just think it's, it's very easy. And that way I don't have to switch out dyes so much. Okay, I hope I'm not scaring you with this. I doesn't people get real scared of spiders and this has a spidery look to it. Uh, just talking about edge coating, there is a small amount of edge coating in this. It is completely optional, but it looks very, very nice. Uh, we just have a few pieces to edge coat. But I just wanna share with you my edge coating go-to lately. Uh, obviously, some sort of a tool to apply the edge coating. Any tool that you like. Um, I, the metal one is fine. I find that it sometimes jams, but it's fine. My edge coating paint I like to use comes from Mojo Sews. I like to use a base coat, which is this one right here. You put about two or three layers of this along the edge first, let them all dry, and then a color coat. I'm gonna try this one. This is a metallic silver. It is pretty old. Um, I don't know if the metallics are coming back or not, but I'm gonna give it a try. And then a top coat on the top. This just makes it nice and shiny. I usually do a three to one ratio. So three base coats, two color coats, and one shine coat. And then this contraption here is really cool because you can use these little things here to hold your pieces while they dry. So if you're like me and you're always like trying to find a place to put your little pieces so they don't stick to the table and dry to it, uh, this contraption is really cool. I also got this from Mojo Sews. I don't know if it's available, but I'm gonna have their site down below. Uh, make sure you're following along on all the social media platforms to find out when all of this stuff is available. So let's go through the pattern pieces. We're gonna start with pieces A and C because they go together. 
Pattern piece A, you're gonna have two exterior cuts. This is gonna be your vinyl. And then four lining cuts. For me, it's the water resistant canvas. On the exterior cuts, you're gonna use pattern piece C with your fusible fleece and you're gonna fuse these on. Now you're gonna mark half of an inch in from all four sides, center your fusible fleece and fuse it on with lots of steam from the back side. Obviously we don't want a hot iron touching the vinyl from the right side. So just fuse that on the back. Next we'll go over pattern pieces B and D. Pattern piece B, you're gonna have two of these of your exterior material and these are the tops. On one of the exterior materials, you're going to center along the back a small one inch by one inch cut of Decoville light and then just fuse it into place. This is going to be for magnet installation later. We need to beef up that, but you're only doing it on one of them. The other one will not have a magnet on it. So center it on the back, fuse it on. And then pattern piece D, you're gonna have two cuts. They're different sizes though. One is a little bit taller than the other. You can see you have a dash line. You're gonna cut one as a full piece and then you're gonna fold down on the dash line and cut the other one. So these should be a little different in size. All right, let's go over pattern pieces E and I. E and I go together. Pattern piece E is the upper gusset lining. This goes on the inside and you're gonna fuse pattern piece I to the back. Again, half of an inch in from all four edges. Just fuse it on. And then we have pattern piece F. You're gonna have two cuts of this. This is going to be exterior material, some sort of vinyl. I only cut one using the pattern piece and then I just cut a scrap that's nice and big. Uh, because when I attach this, I actually like to just sew it on like this. I get kind of nervous trying to line up all the curves and I'm not very good at it. I find this is just easier for me. So I use the pattern piece to cut one piece and then I cut another scrap that's just bigger than that. And I'll show you how I attach it when we make this. On the back of the piece that is cut per the pattern, you're going to want to center another one inch by one inch scrap of Decoval Light over the little dot here. So you're gonna use this to lay it on the back mark where the center of that hole is, and then center a piece of deck of the light over it. Again, just to provide some stabilization for our magnets. Okay, G and H are your D-ring connectors. You're gonna use one or the other. So it depends if you're using three quarter of an inch hardware or one inch hardware. I'm using three quarter of an inch hardware, so I'm using pattern piece H. And you can see I cut two of them out using this, and then I have two cuts of scraps that are bigger. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to just make them go wrong sides together like this, and then sew them on, and then trim the other one down. For me, it's just easier. If, if you want, you can cut all four pieces out using the template, and then just sew them together lined up perfectly. All right, now we have pieces J and K, which are going to be our gusset. Now, let's talk about the gusset. You're gonna have two cuts using piece J. One cut is your exterior material, and it is the full J pattern piece, just like this. So. You cut that and then with your lining piece, you're gonna fold down on these dashed edges over here on the sides. And then you're gonna cut your lining pieces using a shorter version. On the back of your exterior main panel, you're going to fuse piece K, which is your fusible fleece. And you're gonna once again, mark half of an inch from all four edges, center it and just fuse it down. After that, we have pattern piece L, which is a lining piece. Water is the canvas for me. I don't have any interfacing. If you have quilt cotton, make sure you have your woven interfacing. Make sure you know the top and the bottom of this too. This is not a square. It looks like a square, but it's not. It's a rectangle, uh, but not a square. So make sure you mark the top and the bottom. Just mark the midpoints. All right, next up are our zipper tabs. I have four cuts of my lining material for the interior zipper. And then I have two cuts of just for fun exterior material. Now, this is not material I showed you. This is just some scraps I had from some of my favorite vinyl. It's very shiny, very fun. I thought this would be a fun little pop on the top of the zipper. Um, and so two cuts of this, and this is for the two zippers on the top of the bag. And then finally your strap. Now you can do a shoulder strap or you can do a crossbody strap. I've done both. They're both great options. Uh, I'm gonna do a crossbody strap today and I'm doing a three quarter inch wide. So make sure you check the measurements for that. They are different if you're doing a one inch wide strap, but I'm just using that same exterior material from the gusset. Try to make sure you don't use anything too thick because it can be very difficult to create the double folded strap if you have really thick vinyl. You can also just use webbing here if you don't wanna build a strap, which is usually my go-to, but for today I'm going to build one. All right, so we're gonna work on all the little bits. Um, let's start with the magnetic gusset flap. So take your piece that has the interfacing on the back and we're going to install our magnetic snap. Now for me, it's gonna be very simple because I'm just gonna use my template and lay it on the wrong side of my material. I've already poked a hole right in the center, the bullseye of these double circles here. And I'm just gonna mark through that hole onto my material. I'm then gonna grab my hole punch and I'm gonna punch right through that hole. And then from the right side, I'm gonna take the male end of the magnetic snap and I'm going to push that through the hole. 
and then I'm just going to snap on the back like that. Now, if you're using the prongs, same type of thing, except you're gonna put the prongs on the back. Make sure your prongs don't extend away from each other. You might get them too close to the edges. So with the prongs on the back, you might wanna fold them in on each other and then like hammer it down very gently. The pattern does discuss that because you want it to be as flat as possible. So I grab my rivet press with the dies to go with the magnetic snap and I'm just gonna lay my magnetic snap, snap side down, rivet side up and give this a press. And there you go. If you wanna also add some tape over the back of it, especially if you have prongs, go ahead and do that. I'm okay with this smooth rivet. I don't have to worry about that cutting into the material. So now I'm gonna grab some double-sided tape and I'm just going to add a couple pieces of tape running along the back of my flap that I already have cut to size. And using the tape is just going to help prevent this from shifting around while we're sewing it down. So remove the paper from the tape and then lay your two pieces of your flap wrong sides together. Line up all the edges if you've cut them the same size, otherwise just tape them together like this. Now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch along all the edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. It is easiest if you use a zipper foot here so that you can get close to the magnet without it bumping your foot. All right, once you have this sewn on, bring all four of your threads, keeping them nice and long, Bring them all to the side that has the magnetic snap showing. So you just pull on the threads that are already there. Just give them a tug and you can pull the bobbin thread up and then just knot them. I like to do three knots, nice and tight. Having the location down on the flat side of the flap will allow it to be hidden in the end. So then after you have them knotted, cut nice and close to the knot. And then if you're like me and you did not trim both of them to the same size, grab your scissors and just trace right along the outside of the flap so that they're the exact same size. The front and back are the same. And if you did use two pieces with the pattern piece, you still wanna trim off any excess overhang. So if one is like sticking out further than the other, you need to trim it down so that it's the exact same, especially if you're gonna be edge coating. All right, your flap is done. And now we're gonna repeat that with our D-ring connectors. So I'm just going to grab my piece H pieces that already are cut to size. I'm gonna grab my quarter inch double-sided tape for this one. And I'm just gonna add a piece of double-sided tape running right along the center of the back of these. And then I'll grab my scraps here, remove the paper, and then just lay my scrap and my cut piece H wrong sides together, just like that. Do this for the other one as well. So by doing this, I feel like it's just easier to adhere everything, but it also makes it so that you don't have as many fussy cutting options. So if you want, you know, images on both sides to show up a certain way, you don't really have that option with the scraps, but I'm okay with that. All right, now we're gonna take both these pieces to the sewing machine. We're gonna top stitch along all the edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. A good place to start and stop your stitching if you don't want the, you know, kind of messy beginning in the end to be showing in the end is the smaller edge, the more narrow edge. Start and stop down here. Uh, that's inside the bag and you can hide that little bit of a mess if you need to. So once again, I left those tails long. This time I'm gonna pull them to the bobbin side, so the back side, and I'm just gonna pull on my bobbin threads to get the top threads to come to the back. Because when I wrap this around the side later, this will all be hidden. So I just take all four of those and that way from the front, it looks pretty neat and clean. And on the back, I'll just do my triple knot again. So do this for both of your little D-ring connectors. Once you have all that mess on the back, cut the threads very close to the knot. Now you can grab a lighter if you'd like and very carefully just melt down the little tails of those knots so that it sucks in on itself. There we go. And now I'm gonna flip this over and once again, I'm just going to trace that scrap material right around the edge of the template. Okay, so now we have our two D-ring connectors ready to go. We have our flap and we have our little exterior zipper tabs. And now if you're gonna edge coat, now's the time to get started on that. So here are all my edge coating pieces. One thing I like to do before edge coating, I saw this tip online and it's a good one. Uh, with vinyl, is sometimes the vinyl can have little fuzzies on the edge, and as you start adding the layers of edge coating, they kind of bulk up and become look, they look like little knots. To avoid that, grab a lighter, and it, it, be careful because it depends on the type of vinyl you're using, but grab a lighter and just melt away the sides of it. As long as you don't hold it for too long, you shouldn't have any problem with soot marks or anything like that. I found that if you do have a vinyl that leaves like a black sooty mark on it, just grab some rubbing alcohol and a towel and wipe it off, and it should come right off. I'm gonna do this for all of the pieces that I'll be edge coating, which are my flap, 
my two D-ring connectors and then just one edge of my zipper tabs. So zipper tabs are just one edge, that's all. And remember, edge coating is completely optional. You don't have to do it. It'll still look amazing if you don't have edge coating. All right, so to get started, I'm just going to open up my base coat here. And I just take my little tool, dip it in the base coat, and then just run it right along the edge. You'll notice that the first application of your base coat, it kind of doesn't look like anything. Um, it's because your vinyl is very porous. It's kind of like a sponge, and it's just going to soak it all in. Once you let that dry and start adding on more layers, that's when you'll really start noticing that pretty like plastic coating that goes around the edge. It makes the bag look very professional. But the edge coating for this is quick because there's not a lot to do. And then once I have one of these done, I just grab my little clippy here and clip it right into place. And see, it just holds it up for me so I don't have to worry about it sitting on anything or getting stuck to anything, which I think is so cool. So I'm gonna repeat that with my two D-ring connectors, just edge coating all the edges. All right, once you have all three of those pieces completely edge coated, then grab your tab and find the edge. You just need one of the four edges, that's it. That's the only side that's gonna be seen in the end. And again, completely optional. Just grab one of those and add a little bit of the base coat to that. For these bits, you don't have to add a whole lot of the edge coating because it is such a small part. Um, I'll probably just do one, one coat of base coat and one coat of paint on these. But I'm just gonna add them to my little thing here. And there we go, so I'm just gonna put my paint in there and I will return to this and I will tell you every time I add another layer but I'm not gonna show you every time but I will let you know. I'm gonna go add another layer of edge coating, base coat, color coat, whatever it is um, as we work through the bag. All right, so if you haven't already, make sure you go fuse everything, add all your woven interfacing, your fusible fleece, your deck of the light, add it everywhere. Uh, and then you're also gonna wanna mark the midpoints of pretty much everything, top and bottom midpoint of all your panels. So go get all that prepped. It does take a little bit of time, but it's gonna save you time later. And then now we're gonna work on the main lining panels. So you're gonna need your two upper main linings, your two lower main linings, your four zipper tabs, and then your nine inch zipper and your zipper pull already attached. You're also gonna want your interior zipper lining. And then if you have like a lining bag tag, like I do, you're gonna wanna grab that as well. So make sure you have your zipper pull on your zipper tape all ready to go. Now let's work on preparing our zipper. So grab your zipper tape and your four zipper tabs. Take one of your zipper tabs and lay it right side up. And then take your zipper right side up and just lay it over it, short sides together, just like that. Grab your clips and let's clip these together. Grab another zipper tab and you're gonna lay this one right side down. Again, short edge to the short edge of your zipper tape and just include this in the clips. And then we'll repeat this with the other side. Once you have both sides clipped, we're going to sew along both sides at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Once you have these sewn on, pull the front and the back of your zipper tabs back so that they're now wrong sides together and extending away from the zipper teeth. Do the same thing on the other side. Just get them nice and flat. You could use an iron here, but I don't really think you need to. Just flatten them out as much as you can. And now let's top stitch right along these inner seams at an eighth of an inch seam allowance on both sides. Looks like I did not have the camera on for that. I'm sorry, but I just top stitch right on the inside. It's very simple. It goes through the front and the back. So they're both caught and it's all nice and flat now. So now take your zipper tape and you're gonna fold it in half and we're gonna find the midpoints. So just line up your tabs and press and you can Mark this with a pen or you can cut it. I'm gonna show you, if you cut it, you gotta be careful. So I always like to use scissors to cut midpoints because that way I can see it on the front and the back and I don't have to worry about losing the midpoint mark. However, with zipper tape, it does like to unravel. So you wanna make the teeniest, tiniest of cuts right on that fold, right on that corner. Do this for the top and the bottom. Teeny, tiny cut. You don't even think you're doing anything, but when you open it up, you'll see it. Okay, so I have my little tiny triangle cuts there. Again, zipper tape likes to unravel. So after you do that, you need to grab a lighter and just run it right in there to melt all the threads. And that'll make sure it doesn't unravel on you. So now that's nice and secure and our midpoints are marked. So now grab the shorter of the lower main panels and lay it right side up and then take your zipper and we're gonna fold this right side down. And I like the zipper pull when closing to go towards the left. When opening, it goes towards the right, just like that. And we're gonna lay it right side down against the right side of this lower main panel. Line up those midpoint marks first. Use your clips to hold it in place. And then just clip these together along the top edge 
all the way from one end to the other. So now we're just gonna baste along this clipped edge. I use like a four millimeter stitch length and I baste it at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once that's basted in place, lay your zipper so the zipper's wrong side up and then grab your interior zipper panel and we're going to lay that right side down. Now remember your top and bottom are midpoint smart so you should know which one is which. Lay it right side down over the back of your zipper tape and center it using your midpoint marks, clip together and then clip all the way out along the top edges. And now we're gonna sew along this clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, so now we wanna press both of these away from each other. So I'm just gonna take the bigger lining piece here and I'm just gonna press it back. And then with water resistant canvas, it's very easy to just finger press it and it creases on itself really nice. If you're using quill cotton here, you should definitely use an iron to get this pressed. So I'll do one side like that and then I'll flip this over and then work from the lining side like that and then just give it a good press right along that seam do your best to get it as straight and flat as possible there we go and now let's top stitch right along this bottom seam here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance so now take the bottom of the interior zipper lining panel and you're going to flip it to the back of the zipper just like this you're going to flip it up so it comes to the back side of your zipper tape and line up those midpoint marks on the top and clip together and then just clip along the entire top edge here because we're working on the other side of the zipper tape now and now let's baste along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance so once that's basted in place grab your upper main lining panel and this is the panel that has the deck of a light square on the back so this is the one that's going to have the magnetic snap grab that one and you can see it's just going to kind of end up like this so cute you're going to flip these right sides together so flip this right side down along the right side of the zipper tape making sure that the long edges match up and i always like to start with the midpoint clipping the midpoints together first and then just clip along the straight edge all the way to the end now let's sew along that clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance so once this is stitched on you're going to flip only the upper main lining panel up so the seam is gonna go behind this panel, but you're not doing anything with the lining panel, just flipping this upper main panel up. And now we're gonna top stitch right along the bottom at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, I'm gonna quickly go add another base coat to all of my little bits for my edge painting. Um, I'm just letting you know I'm adding second base coat. The first base coat dries very quickly and so does the second one. So I'm gonna go add that real quick and then we'll continue on with the lining. All right, now lift up this lower lining panel and then on the sides of your zipper pocket, on the right and left sides, you're gonna measure in three quarters of an inch and mark a straight line. The straight line goes from the fold on the bottom all the way to where the raw edges of your seam are up here at the top. I like to add a couple clips right on the inside down there just to hold it in place. And then grab your scissors and just cut up those marked lines from the folded edge all the way till you get to that seam and then turn this and cut right along the bottom of that seam. We're not cutting the seam right here at any point. This is just narrowing the pocket so that we don't have to worry about it getting in the seams when we're sewing all this together later. Just making this part of the pocket a bit more narrow. Okay, so this is what it should look like. We flip it up, it's nice and tucked in like that. Now, flatten out this bottom fold as best you can and then grab your scissors and cut right along the fold. It doesn't have to be neat or perfect. It just needs to be cut. Now let's just add some clips to the bottom here to keep it together. And now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along these two side edges that we cut on the sides here, the left and right. At a 3 8 inch seam allowance, you wanna go just over the raw edge of the seam up to where you see the stitching. So once you get to the stitching, that's where you can start or stop your 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. All right, once you have the sides stitched, you're going to measure three quarters of an inch from the bottom opening here. So this opening is how we're gonna turn everything out in the end. So three quarters of an inch up from there. And then along the seam allowance, we're gonna clip in without cutting the stitches. So just clip in towards the stitches right along that line, but don't cut any of those threads. And then you're going to take the bottom edge of your material and fold it up one side at a time to meet that marked line. So I just do the center of one side and then I can just kind of use that fold to do the other side since I didn't mark the other side. And then on the edges over here, you just kind of flip the seam to the side and fold it over. It's just gonna give you a clean finish in the end. So you can see again, I'm just gonna flip this 
cut seam to the side and then fold it wrong sides together so that it tucks in nicely. And just do your best to get this as flat as possible. If you wanna iron this, you can iron this. I'm just gonna press it with my fingers for now. But there we go, all right? This side is done, you can put it to the side. Grab the taller of the lining panels and then the upper lining panel and your bag tag if you have a sew-in bag tag. And what we're gonna do is just take the upper and bottom lining panels and lay them right sides together, matching up their midpoint marks along the top and then adding clips to the top edge completely. Now let's sew along this top clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. All right, now take the upper lining panel and flip it up so that the seam is behind it. So for me, my seam wants to go down below the thinner material, but we don't want that because that's not what we did on the other side. So it needs to go up just like this, give it a good press. If you have a seam roller, these are actually very handy. I'll be honest, at first I just bought it because it was pretty, but it is very, very handy. So I'm just gonna seam roll it, there we go. And now we're gonna top stitch right along this top edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, holding that seam in place behind the upper piece of our lining. Isn't this so cute? I love this bag so much, it's so cute. Okay, so now I'm gonna add my bag tag. So find the midpoint along the seam right here. I just marked it with a silver ink pen. And then I'm gonna grab my little tag here and add some double-sided tape to the back of it. And then I'm gonna measure one inch down from the seam. And using that midpoint, I'm just going to center my tag and stick it in place. There we go, so now my tag is centered and an inch down from the seam. And now I'm just gonna go top stitch along all four edges of my tag at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so now we're gonna do um, the more complicated bit of this bag, but it, it, it's not hard, it's just complicated. You gotta make sure you follow the instructions. I have made this bag two times before and I have had to seam rip multiple times because I did not follow the instructions. So third time is the charm, we got this. You're gonna need your two main lining pieces. You're gonna need your main exterior pieces, the four lining pieces, your two zippers with the zipper pulls already on, these zipper tabs. I decided not to add any paint to this. I only added some base coating. Uh, the base coat is white and so it actually looks just fine. So I'm gonna leave the tabs as they are. And then if you have like an exterior bag tag, you'll need that as well. All right, so I'm gonna do both my zippers at the same time. So grab your zipper tape and you'll notice when you close the zipper behind it stays closed, when you opened it in front of it opens. We're worried about the open side, so make sure you find the open side and then separate the zipper teeth just like that. Now what we're gonna do is fold the teeth back on themselves. We do this a lot on the channel, but if you haven't seen it before, what we wanna do is we wanna pinch along the zipper tape. So you can measure down and pick a place. I like to just pinch it so that the top raw edge of our zipper tape folds back, the zipper teeth fold to a 90 degree angle, and that top raw edge is going to line up with the side edge of our zipper tape, just like this. So from the front, I don't know if you can see from the front, it looks like this, just a fold over. On the back, it looks like this, like a diagonal, a diagonal fold. And everything is neatly lined up. So once I have that where I want it, I'm just going to clip it in place. I'll do the same thing on the other side. So it looks just like that. I'm gonna repeat this with my other zipper. All right, now I'm gonna take both these zippers to the sewing machine and I'm going to base down these corners along the sides of the zipper tape at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, just holding it in place. You could use glue here, you could use double-sided tape, you could hand sew it. There's a lot of options. It's a little tricky at the sewing machine, so use your stiletto to kind of readjust and make sure it stays in place. It doesn't have to be perfect, we just really need to make sure these teeth curve off and away from one another. So once you have those basted down, you should see when you try to close the zipper on the open end, it stops just like that. That's the point of it. So I don't think you're supposed to put the zipper pulls on just yet, but I did. Uh, but what you wanna do now is take your zippers and lay them flat and from open edge to the left, like this, if the open edge is on the right, you wanna measure these so that they are exactly 8.75 inches long. All right, and if you haven't already, add your zipper pulls. There we go. Now we're gonna take our zipper tabs. You can grab some double-sided tape if it's easier. You just add a small piece of double-sided tape right over the closed edge of your zipper teeth. So centered on the closed raw edge over here. And then find your edge-coated edge if you have one and fold it in half so that the edge-coated edge lines up with the opposite edge, just like this. And what you're gonna pretty much do is just wrap it around the end of your zipper tape, 
just like that. That's all we're doing. So the double-sided tape just helps it from shifting around at the sewing machine. But I like to just press the tab in half and then open it up, slide the end of my zipper teeth in there, and then just like nom nom, gobble it up along the edge, just like this. Grab some clips to hold this in place just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And then repeat with your other zipper tape and zipper tab. All right, once these are in place, we're going to top stitch along the inner raw edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Do this for both of them. You might want to back stitch at the beginning and the end just to make sure that it doesn't unravel. All right, next step, let's mark the midpoint on our zipper teeth. So I'm just going to fold my zipper, my full zipper in half, open edge to the end of the zipper tab, and then pinch. You can use a marking tool here or you can use the scissors, but remember if you use the scissors, you also need to melt down that little triangle so that it doesn't fray over time while it's being used because that would just be so sad. So do this for both of your zippers. All right, now I'm gonna go add my third layer of base coat to my little tabs and D-ring connectors. Okay, now grab one of your exterior main panels and one of your zippers and on the back of your exterior main panel, along the top corners, measure down three quarters of an inch and mark a horizontal line right along the seam for both of these. Now flip your exterior main panel right side up and then let's grab some double-sided tape and we're gonna add double-sided tape along the curved top portions. So not the two little straight notches, just along the curved top. All right, once you have that on there, remove the paper from the tape and then take your zipper and with the zipper pull when closed all the way on the left, match up the midpoint mark of your zipper with the midpoint mark of your main panel and your zipper and main panel are right sides together so the zipper is right side down just first stick the midpoints together and then slowly work one side to the next so i'm going to start with the right side and i'm just gently curving my zipper tape to match up with the edge of the curve on the top of my main panel there we go and it should extend the curve just a bit so do the same thing on the left side. There we go. So this is what we should have. I don't know how this works out in the end, but it does, it's so good. All right, so now we're gonna go based along this curved zipper tape, just the zipper tape, at a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, once that's basted, grab one of your main lining panels and lay it wrong side up. Grab yourself a ruler and using the one inch grid mark, line up the one inch corner here with the corner on the top left of your lining panel. And I'll just say, it's not gonna line up perfectly along the entire gridded edges, that's okay. We just want this bottom right corner. We're just gonna trace the bottom right corner just like that. So see, we have like a little one inch block up here. We're gonna do the same thing on the right side, matching up the corner of our grid mark with the corner of our lining panel, and then just tracing the corner of our ruler like that. There we go. Remember, this is on the wrong side of your lining material. Now grab your exterior panel with the zipper wrong side up, take your lining panel, lining right side down, and we're just going to attach these together. I like to clip the center as always, and then clip out towards the sides, but they should match up exactly along this top edge. Okay, remember we're following instructions. So we're gonna flip this over, and we're gonna look at the back of the main panel. This is where we have those basting stitches. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna sew right next to those basting stitches at a 3 8 inch seam allowance from the raw edge. So it's just gonna be an eighth of an inch in from those basting stitches, but only where the basting stitches are. We're not doing end to end here. So make sure your needle is only sewing over the zipper, nowhere else, and back stitch at the beginning and the end. Go slow here. Okay, that's sewed on. Make sure it's nice and smooth looking. This is so cool. So now I'll slip this over to the lining side and grab yourself a small piece of double-sided tape, just a, like a, just a small piece, like a three-eighths of an inch small piece, see, very small. And I'm gonna line this up right in the corner where my mark is. So see, remember our little, little corner marks we made? I'm gonna put the tape right in there. So do this for both corners. And then remove the paper from the tape. And I will tell you that double-sided tape does not like to stick to water-resistant canvas at all. That's the one tricky thing about water-resistant canvas. Tape doesn't like it. You see how we fold it over? We want to do the same thing on the other side. Just fold it over. All right, either way, however you have those corners stuck down. Once they're stuck down, flip this over and grab some double-sided tape here and add a teeny tiny bit, again, like a 3 8 inch wide one, right above those little horizontal lines you marked right on the seam. 
So all of this is to reduce bulk along these corners on the top in the end, which gives it the best look, guys. It's the best look. You just wait till you see it. So leave the paper on the tape for now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip our lining and our exterior wrong sides together. So I find it easiest to flip them wrong sides together and line up the bottom midpoint mark and clip along this bottom straight edge first. And then you can clip along the curves here, just lining up raw edge to raw edge. You can see how I'm like, I'm holding it up while I'm doing this. I'm not trying to lay it flat. I feel like I struggle a lot when I try to flatten it all out on the table versus just holding it and just focusing on raw edge to raw edge. So now that you started clipping it, now you can remove the paper from those little pieces of double-sided tape we have on the back of the main exterior. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold this top raw edge of your exterior back so that it meets up with that marked line and the tape is gonna hold it in place. This is what you end up having on the back side. You see how the lining is at a diagonal and then it's just taped back like that. Repeat this with the other side. All right, once you have those corners done, now continue clipping up along the sides of your lining and your exterior. And now I'm gonna lay it flat, zip up my zipper, and I'm gonna flatten it up by the zipper teeth. Try to get a nice smooth edge here. You can once again grab your little seam roller to roll out that seam, making it look real nice. Real, real nice. All right, so this is how it should be looking now. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna top stitch along this entire top edge right by the zipper. At an eighth of an inch seam allowance, you are going all the way to the end. You can backstitch the beginning and the end if you'd like. All right, this is looking good. You can remove all these clips. We don't need to sew anything over here yet. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through how to attach the next side. You're gonna grab your main lining panel that has the zipper and then just the main lining panel lining. If you haven't already, you do wanna trim down the edges of the zipper tabs. I forgot to do that earlier. My zipper tabs are still extending. Here we go. So these are the three pieces we need right now. And before I do this, I'm actually gonna add some paint to my tabs and I'm gonna show you how I do that. All right, before I move on to the next step, I'm gonna add the paint coats to my edge coating. Uh, this is a metallic paint. Again, I don't know if this is offered anymore. This is actually very old, but it still should work great. So I have my flap tab here. I have three layers of base coat. You can see it already looks really nice. I could actually just leave it like this. It feels nice. It looks nice. It looks just like a white coating. But I do wanna try this other paint as well. So I'm just going to roll on the color. Now you can't really see the difference because it's a silver going over a white. All right, so I just have one coat of paint on here and I'm gonna do that for my two D-ring connectors as well. All right, so now we're gonna attach the other side of the zipper, which is like the inside compartment that the magnetic flap goes over. It's so cool. So you're gonna grab your lining panel that has the zipper and then a lining panel that's just a regular lining panel. Now lay your lining panel with the zipper, right side up, and grab your double-sided tape. And once again, we're going to add this double-sided tape only along the curved top edge here. And then remove the paper from the tape and take your unit with the zipper and lay your zipper right side down, right side to the lining panel here and match up the midpoint marks first. And then slowly work your zipper tape around that top curve on one side and then do the other side. All right, once it's stuck in place, now let's go base this down only along the zipper, only where the zipper is. Don't go past it because we need those marks to guide us later. So only along the zipper at a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, so mark those L shapes on the back just like you did previously by marking one inch away from the corners and take your lining panel and lay it right side down along the back, the wrong side of the zipper, top seam here, match up the midpoint marks first, clip those together, and then just clip along the entire top edge where your zipper is. Now flip this over so that we're once again looking at the back of the exterior and you're just looking at those basting stitches. And once again, we're going to sew at a 3 8 inch seam allowance only where these basting stitches are. So only along the zipper. We're not getting close to the edges here. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning of the end and go slow. So now this time on the back of the lining, I'm gonna try using some leather double-sided tape because nothing wants to work with this water-resistant canvas. So once again, I'm going to add the tape right in the corner of where those little L shapes are and then remove the paper from the tape and fold that corner of your lining back so that it meets right in that corner L shape. Now flip the lining and the other lining with the zipper wrong sides together 
and match up the midpoints on the bottom edge and then clip along this bottom straight edge and then clip all the way up to the top. You can fold down this top edge of the inner lining panel here where the vinyl is, but we're not taping it. So on the other side we taped it. This time we're not gonna tape it. We're just gonna fold it down and clip it, but we need to keep it untaped for now. And then repeat this on the other side. Okay, so once you have it all pressed together, you're gonna pull it away from the zipper. So close the zipper all the way and pull the material away from the zipper. If you wanna grab your seam roller, you can seam roll this. Just give it a good finger press. And this time when we top stitch, we're only top stitching where the zipper is. So on the other side here, we top stitch from end to end. On the lining side, we're only gonna top stitch where the zipper teeth are and where the zipper tab is. So you're not gonna go all the way to the edges on the top and bottom here. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end of your top stitching. All right, after you have that top stitch, you can kind of fold this away from each other and have a little look. How pretty is that? And this is the inside like little secret pocket between the two zipper pockets. That looks so good. All right, now I'm gonna attach my metal bag tag. So looking at just the exterior panel, lifting up all the lining panels away from it, we're gonna measure up one and a half inches from the bottom center mark. And I'm just using the washer from my bag tag to mark where I'm gonna need to use my seam ripper to create little slits so that I can install my bag tag using these prongs on the back. So I'm just gonna use the seam ripper real quick and carefully go right over my marks. It's always better for these to be cut a little smaller rather than larger. So you can squeeze them in if they're a little smaller, but if they're too big, your bag tag is gonna wiggle around. So I'm just gonna put the bag tag in there like that, flip it over, attach my washer, open the prongs. That looks cute. Then I'm gonna grab a little scrap of duct tape and I'm just gonna cover the back of my prongs with the tape so that it doesn't wear any holes down in my lining. All right, now take your main panel and your two lining panels that don't have a pocket and pull them all down so that they're behind the main panel and the lining pocket with the zip panel is on its own up here on the top. So pull all three of these panels together, line up the midpoint marks on the bottom edge here and then clip all three together. So we're clipping all three of these panels, not just on the bottom, but all the way up the sides as well. Okay, once you have those three panels clipped, now let's focus on the lining panel with the zipper. And remember how we did not tape this top corner here? What we wanna do is we wanna pull that top corner down so it's right sides together with the folded over, sewn down top corner of the exterior. So the two bottom raw edges are gonna match up. So you see how this, this top corner now for the lining part is not folded in with the seam. It's completely open, being pushed against the exterior seam. So clip those together. If you wanna staple these together so they don't move, you can do that. It's a little trickier on the zipper tab, depending on what type of vinyl you used. Just get them together. You can tape them, whatever you need to do. I'm just gonna use clips for this. Okay, so now we wanna baste along the clipped edges of the exterior and making sure you catch that little bit of the lining up here, but the lining panel with the zipper is out of the way. We're only stitching down those top, top corners. And just go around the entire unit, basting it down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, once that's all basted on, just make sure you caught everything on the back. Make sure you caught the top edges of those seams from the lining. There we go. So this is one side done. We're gonna repeat this for the second side. I'm gonna do it off camera, but I'm gonna set you up first, showing you the only difference. So before we get started on the second pouch, let's put a second round of the edge coating paint on our D-rings and our tab. So to do the other side, you're gonna repeat all those steps exactly, doing the exterior and lining, attaching it to the zipper, and then attaching the inner lining and main lining to the other side of the zipper. The only difference here is when you're attaching the zipper this time, if you want the zippers to open and close the same way, when you attach this zipper, attach it so that when the zipper closes, it goes towards the right, not towards the left. So it needs to go down towards the right, just like that. And it's just, that's the opposite. It's the only other thing. And also we don't have a bag tag on the main part here. But other than that, it's the exact same thing we just did. And I'm gonna do that off camera. All right, once you have both of your pouches complete, this is how it should look. And you see when they turn outsides together like this, the zipper pulls are both on the same end, the zipper tabs are on the same end. 
This is gonna look so cute. All right, so now let's attach the flap to our bag. So take both of your inner lining pieces that have that upper lining over here, and we wanna find the midpoint along the zipper. So let's just fold this in half, and I'm gonna use a vinyl marking pen to just mark the midpoint right along the top seam of both of these on that lining upper panel. And then on the lining panel that has the zipper, use a ruler to help you find the midpoint on the top part here and mark a dot. Do the same thing on the other side, except on this one, find the midpoint, but instead of marking a centered dot, you're gonna mark a line along the bottom edge of this upper panel. All right, and the reason we do that is because the dot is for the magnetic snap that's gonna be attached to this side, and then the line is for the flap that's gonna be attached to this side. So let's start with the magnetic snap. I'm just gonna grab my hole punch, and we're gonna lift up all these layers, and we're gonna punch a hole right where that dot is, and you just wanna make sure you're only going through that top vinyl piece, no lining pieces. And then I'll take my snap and push it through that hole just like that. Open this up. If you have prongs, go ahead and open up those prongs. If you have a snap like I do, just snap that into place. And then if you need to switch out your dies, make sure you switch out your dies if you're using a rivet press. And I'm just gonna press this into place. All right, so we have the female end of the snap installed. You can wipe off any little marks you made. Now with the flap, with the male end of the magnetic snap facing up, grab a ruler and a marking pen and mark the midpoint along the bottom flat edge. You'll wanna make sure it's right on the edge of the material and then grab one or two small pieces of double-sided tape and you're gonna attach the tape just above the top stitching. So just above where the top stitching is and now grab your panel that does not have the zipper pocket and you're gonna line this up like this. You're gonna tape this down so the flap side that does not have the magnetic snap is facing up and it's centered with that line you drew. So you might find this easier to flip it like this. Find that bottom line you drew that's on the midpoint and then also the line that you drew right on the edge of your flap. Line those up and then flip these together. And just have the bottom flat edge of the flap line up with that seam on the bottom of the lining top panel. All right, now grab your ruler and a marking tool that's for fabric and measure half of an inch up from the bottom straight edge of the flap and mark a horizontal line. Okay, so now we need to stitch this on, but we don't wanna stitch through all these other things. We only wanna stitch through this piece of vinyl here, this main panel. So you're gonna open up your zipper and then slide the top of the flap into the zipper and then open this up. So that way when we stitch this down, we're only going through the back side of this material and we're going to top stitch right over the bottom top stitching we already have here and then up along the sides and then over that half inch mark that you made and then down the other side, just making a nice rectangle to hold this flap in place. Okay, so this is what you should have now. See, when you put these together, they're gonna go back to back like this and then this flap flips like upside down like that. Isn't that cool? It's all coming together. So you can put both of these main panels to the side for now. Now grab your gusset lining and your upper gusset lining panels, and we're going to attach the upper gussets to the side of the gusset lining. So lay your gusset lining right side up. The longer edge of the upper gusset is going to match up right sides together with the short edges of the main gusset lining. And then just clip these together, right sides together. Repeat this on the other side. Now let's go to the sewing machine and sew along both of these clipped edges at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. All right, once you have these sewn together, take the sewn edge that you just made for one side and you're going to cut into the seam allowance going up towards the left edge of your interfacing. Just line it up with that left edge of your interfacing, cutting straight up, but you don't cut any of the stitches. So you're just cutting up to the stitches. You're gonna do the same thing on the right side of the interfacing, just cutting straight up like that. It's about a half of an inch away from the edges. Do this for the other side of your top gusset lining as well. So just cutting straight perpendicular close to the stitching, but not into it. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna flip this open. The center part of the top piece and the lining are gonna go up, and the two little short edges are gonna go down. So you see, this is how it should look. So use some clips to hold this sides down. And just make sure if you need to use some tape or anything you can, just make sure the center part of the seam is going up. And repeat this for the other side. Sides go down, center seam goes up. Now we're going to 
top stitches in place by starting on the side of the lining part, the bottom lining, and going up at an eighth of an inch seam allowance until we get to the top piece of the lining. And then on the top edge of the lining, we're going to top stitch an eighth of an inch and then going down the sides. This essentially is gonna hold down those side pieces and it's gonna hold down the center piece exactly where we want it. Do this for both sides. So once you have those top edges attached, grab your exterior gusset and your lining gusset and let's lay them right sides together. And we're gonna match up the short top bits here and then just use some clips to hold them right sides together. And now let's sew along both of these clipped edges at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. All right, now you can flip this so that it's right sides out just like that. Okay, now we just have to put it all together. We pretty much have the front, the back, and the middle. We just have to sew it together. So let's start with the back panel. Lay the exterior right side up and then flip up the lining. So remember, the exterior has two of the lining panels basted onto it, and then there's just the middle lining panel on its own. So lay it like this. And then grab your gusset, and you're gonna wanna lay your gusset exterior right sides together with the back exterior. So just like this, and then line up the midpoint marks on the bottom, and then clip these together. Okay, so first just clip the bottom straight edge, and then we're gonna work on the sides over here. So pull up your lining, just like this, and the seam between the top and bottom edges of your lining should match up with the seam between the top and bottom edges of your gusset lining. So match those up and use your clips to clip at that seam and then open the seam between your exterior gusset and then the top lining gusset part. Open that seam up and match that up with the seam connecting the back main panel with that lining top panel and clip that together. So always wanna work on lining up our seams first and then everything else can go into place. So we're gonna repeat that on the other side. So once again, the connection between the gusset lining and the top of the gusset lining, and then the connection between the lining and the top lining, those need to be matched up first. And then open your seam connecting the gussets and line up that seam with the seam connecting the back panel and the lining panel. There we go. And once you have all that clipped, now work on clipping the straight edges of the sides and the remaining straight edge of the bottom. Don't clip the curves yet though, we'll do that last. All right, so now when we're working on the curves, grab your scissors and just cut little slits that are about an eighth to a quarter of an inch in to the edge of the gusset. Don't cut anything on the back panel or anything like that. We're only working on the gusset. So just little slips like that. And then we're going to let the gusset spread out around these corners and clip in place. So you see how it spreads out there? Can you see the little clips in there? It makes it much easier. So do the same thing on the other corner of the gusset. All right, so there's the exterior. Now we gotta clip the lining in place. We have to do all of it at once. So make sure your lining is flipped so it's right side down and right sides against the lining panel and then find those bottom midpoint marks and clip those together first. And then just like before, I like to clip the straight bits first. So over here on the side, kind of tug it and get that straight edge lined up and clip that together. Same thing on the other side. And then just like we did on the other side, I'm gonna make little tiny cuts into the gusset right around those corners so it can spread out, but you don't have to be as thoughtful with the lining because if it pinches a little bit or creases, you're not gonna notice it inside the bag. Okay, I know it's a bit of a mess right now when you look at it. It, it will be fine sewing. You don't need everything to be flat when you're just sewing one spot. So we just flatten out the spot as we work on it. We're gonna start on the bottom though, and of the lining. And on the bottom of the lining, we're gonna start sewing at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. As we get closer to this top piece over here, we're gonna decrease it to a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Use a zipper foot, it's gonna be easier, okay? So 3 8 inch seam allowance. As we sew, we're trying to get as close as we can to the zipper over here without actually sewing over the zipper and without anything pleating or anything like that. So keep everything as flat as possible, go slow. And then sew the exterior at a full 3 8 inch seam allowance until you get past the other seam over here, which for me is pretty bulky because of that really, really cute vinyl tab. 
Um, and then as I get into the lining, I'm gonna increase the seam allowance to 5 eighths of an inch all the way until I get back to where I started. We're not leaving any holes or openings here. It's just 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance on the lining, 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance on the exterior. Once that's complete, you might wanna do a second row of stitches that are just outside of that first row, right by the zipper tabs, because that's where a lot of pressure is and that's where it's gonna be pulling a lot. So doing a second row of stitches that are just an eighth of an inch closer to the raw edges will help protect the material there so too much pressure doesn't get put on it. All right, once you have that sewn on, you can just check the sides. See, isn't that nice? We have so many problems with side seams like this where it gets so bulky and it just looks, it looks bad in a lot of, a lot of bags we've made. But because of all of the techniques that we did when we were sewing these panels together, we have a lot of layers here and you can't even tell. It looks so crisp. I love that. Uh, also just check your corners, make sure everything looks good. Looks good to me. Now I'm gonna trim down the seam allowance on the lining side to about a quarter of an inch. Then you can trim down the seam allowance a little bit on the exterior too if you'd like. Not too much though, but you can trim it down to a quarter of an inch as well. And I do trim down the corners because I don't have pinking shears. The pattern suggests just trimming the straight edges and then using pinking shears on the corners. Uh, I don't have those, so I'm just gonna make little clips into both layers of fabric, so the exterior and the gusset this time, not just the gusset. I'm just gonna make little clips into the seam, making sure I'm not too close to those stitches because we don't want those to rip. And I'll do the same thing on the lining. All right, now we're just gonna repeat that with the other panel. So for this one, make sure you have your zipper mostly open. It doesn't have to be all the way open because you don't wanna worry about sewing over your zipper pull. I'm gonna have the zippers on the top about halfway open. But this zipper pocket with the hole in the bottom, that's how we're turning it all out. So you do want that to be mostly open. So lay this spread open like this again where the lining is up top and the exterior front is on the bottom and they are separated. Grab your unit. We're gonna be working on the opposite edge of the gusset this time. So we're gonna flip this down so the gusset comes right sides together with the front panel. And we're going to match up the midpoint marks on the bottom edge and clip together. So once again, I'm first gonna just clip along the bottom straight edge and then we're going to look at the connection between the lining zipper tab and then the upper lining. And then looking at the gusset, we're gonna look at the lining for the gusset and then like the upper lining for the gusset. And we're gonna match those up. Those two seams are gonna to come together and clip those together. And then open the side seam between the two gusset pieces and line up that seam with the seam connecting the lining to the front panel. And get all these lined up first. Do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm gonna work on the straight edges of the exterior. This is when it gets a little tricky because now it's a much more three-dimensional object than it was before. So just don't try to flatten things out. Let it stand up like this. Again, always just focus on the few inches that you're looking at. So I'm leaving the corners for now while I go work on the lining section. So I'm gonna take the bottom of the lining gusset using the midpoint mark on that, lining it up with the midpoint mark on the bottom of the lining panel. And let's clip these together. All right, and this zipper panel, it does like to try to get into the seam. So I'm gonna just clip it folding in those corners because I have sewn it into the seam a couple times now. Okay, looking at the corners now, once again, we only make little quarter inch snips into the gusset, not the main panel. And then we're going to use those cuts to spread out the gusset so that we can get it to go around that curve of the front panel. So do this for all four of your corners, the two on the exterior and the two on the lining. Okay, so we're gonna sew this again with the gusset side up, so the gusset wrong side up. And once again, we're sewing the lining at a 5 8 inch seam allowance and the exterior at a 3 8 inch seam allowance, just like we did before. Make sure you taper it off close to the zipper and just get as close as you can and then do a second row of stitching just outside of the first row, right around the zipper to reinforce it.
Okay, once you have that all sewn together, once again, you can trim down the seam allowance. Just do this carefully, because there's a lot of stuff folded up here. You don't want to accidentally cut something you're not supposed to. And then once you trim down that seam allowance, don't forget to cut into the corners just a little bit so that they can spread out when we flip this out. So do this for the exterior and the lining. All right, now open up that zipper pocket opening and pull the entire bag right side out through that opening. And then reach in and just use your fingers to help round out those corners. As long as you use pinking shears or you snipped into the corners, you should have nice smooth corners. If you find them bunching up a lot, then you didn't smooth them out enough. You need to go back and clip into those. Right, so I like to just kind of mess with this. So remember, this is not the top of the bag. This seam here is the top of the bag. So you have to press in that gusset deeper than you think you do. So you see this is what you have now. Isn't that cute? So cute. All right, let's close up the lining and then we'll work on the D-rings and we'll make our strap. So pull the lining pocket out that has that hole in it. And if your material has unfolded, just refold it so that the raw edges are tucked inside. And we just have a nice fold along the top edge here. And then use some clips to clip this closed. Keep it nice and straight. All right, now let's top stitch along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. And once you have that closed, just tuck in that lining pocket. Push it all the way in there, flatten it out. And then just press everything with your fingers. Oh yeah, that looks good. All right, so let's make sure the sides are nice and flat and pressed, okay, before you attach your D-rings. All right, and it might be kind of hard to see, so if you don't notice it, maybe don't worry about it, but there is a tiny gap on one side. It's so hard to see. There's a tiny gap between the exterior and the lining on one side of each of these connections for the zipper. So for over here, it's, it's right here on the left. And so what you want to do, if you want to do this, it's optional. You can grab some glue and glue, put some glue inside of there. If you find this little hole right here to be very, very small, so like right here, it's very small. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna add any glue in there. But over here, the hole is quite a bit bigger. So I can actually use like the tip of my pen to kind of open it up a bit and then take my glue, put it only in there. You don't wanna get glue all over the place and then shut it and clip it and let the glue dry. So you'll have them on this side as well, but if you sewed really close to your zipper tab, you probably can't even access it. And if you can't, don't worry about it. Don't get glue all over the place to solve a problem that's not a problem. Okay, so make sure your D-ring tabs are dry if you added the edge coating. I did the shiny top coat on the end. Um, you don't need to, it is optional, but I did add it. It was cute. So grab your template for your D-rings, whichever you're using, the one inch or the three quarter of an inch. Grab a stiletto and just poke a hole where those two dots are. And then grab your D-ring connector and lay it right side up and place your connector over it and use a marking tool to mark where those holes are. Do this for both of your D-ring connectors and then grab your hole punch and punch a hole where you marked. Okay, so grab your two D-rings, grab your rivets, and grab your little D-ring connectors that have the holes. And what you want to do is fold one of your D-ring connectors in half, matching up those punched holes just like that. And then you can thread a D-ring on there. Right now we just kind of want to get a visual. So grab the edge of your bag and you're going to just wrap your D-ring connector along the top and center it. So just kind of eyeball this at first. See where, make sure it's folded all the way over and then grab your marking tool and go through the hole on the outside. So the bigger part of the loop here, so you see your D-ring connector, you have the bigger part and the more narrow part. The bigger part goes on the outside. So then just mark through the hole on the bigger part so you have placement just like that. Again, make sure that this is nice and flat. It's not bunched up anywhere. And then grab your hole punch and punch a hole where you marked. And this hole should be centered on your gusset. And what you can do now is just measure down. So mine is about seven eighths of an inch from the top edge of my gusset. And I'll just repeat that on the other side, but let's install this first. So I have my D-ring threaded on my D-ring connector. 
I'm going to take my rivet and push it through the larger side of the connector and then I'm going to push it through the gusset all the way through and then I'm going to wrap around the more narrow side of the connector and push my rivet through the hole in that as well and then I'll add the other end of my rivet and this is how it looks before I set it. Isn't that cute? Such a fun way to add this. So I'm going to repeat that over here on the other side. Uh, for this one though, I'm just going to measure seven eighths of an inch down and centered. Okay, so I made my mark and now I'm going to punch the hole in the gusset. Then I'll take my remaining D-ring connector, thread my D-ring on it, put my post rivet through the larger end of the D-ring connector and then push that through the gussets and then wrap around the more narrow end, push the post through the hole on the narrow end and then add a cap on the back. How stinking cute is that? Isn't that so fun? I love these little D-ring connectors, they're so cute. Okay, so I already have my dies for my rivets installed on my hand press, so I'm just gonna use that. And I'm just gonna push this in here carefully, making sure I'm getting both sides of the rivet and then pressing it down. And there you go, the bag portion is done. Now all we have to do is build our strap and we're done. So grab your bag strap, whether you're using the shoulder strap or the crossbody strap and mark a midpoint line running along the center on the back side. And again, this is gonna depend on if you're making a one inch strap or a three quarters of an inch strap. Once you have that midpoint mark done, you can use double-sided tape or not. If you don't, if you don't prefer using double-sided tape, you don't have to, but we're gonna add some double-sided tape that's about a quarter of an inch away from that midpoint line. And we're gonna do it on both sides. All right, so I have two pieces of double-sided tape each about a quarter of an inch away from the middle line. And so I'm gonna start on one side by removing the paper from the tape. And the pattern suggests actually folding this starting in the middle to prevent twisting. So we'll try that. So I'm gonna take the long raw edge and I'm gonna fold it wrong sides together back so that the long edge meets that midpoint line. And then I'm just gonna stick it onto that tape. So I'm gonna go along the entire length of the strap doing this on one side. All right, once you have one side folded in, let's rotate this and take the tape off of the other side. And we're gonna do the same thing, taking the long raw edge and folding it up to meet that midpoint line. And the pattern suggests getting it real close to that midpoint line, but not having it actually touch the other raw edge that you already taped down. And that's just to reduce the bulk in that corner right there. All right, now we have it taped like this, and now we're gonna grab the tape one more time. And this time we're gonna run some double-sided tape right along the center on the back of one of these folds. So we still have it so that the raw edges are facing up. And I'm just gonna put some double-sided tape right along that center. And I'm gonna run it all the way down. And we're just gonna do one strip of double-sided tape this time. All right, now we can remove the paper from that double-sided tape. And then we're gonna fold the whole thing in half, just like that. And if you wanna use clips, you can. If you don't need to, then don't. And when it comes to the ends, if you have like metal strap ends, you can add those. I did that previously, but I don't have three quarter of an inch metal strap ends. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna fold them under. So I am going to just kind of trim down these corners here of my vinyl. And then I'm going to open this up and I'm gonna fold the short edge back and then refold this. I'm just trying to make sure everything lines up and then fold it in half again. So you can see this way, my short edges don't have the raw edges showing. I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. Okay, so now my strap is all taped together. My short edges do not want to stay closed. So we're going to grab some clips to help hold those down. And then just doing your best to keep it all together. We're gonna to take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch along all the edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Just go slow. I like to increase my top stitching stitch length to like a four or four and a half even because sometimes these straps can just be difficult to get the stitches nice and long. But just be careful with the ends here. If you did double fold them, they are going to be a little bit thicker. Just go slow over them.
All right, the strap is sewn. We just have to add the hardware. So I have my two swivel hooks, my slide adjuster, and two rivets. So I'm gonna start with one end and I'm gonna grab my small ruler and I'm gonna mark three quarters of an inch from the end. And I'm gonna keep it centered and mark a dot. And then I'm gonna measure two and a quarter inch from that same end and centered and mark a dot. Now I'm gonna grab my hole punch and I'm gonna hole punch at both of those dots. Now take that end that we're working on and you're gonna slide it up through the bottom edge of a slider and then over through that middle bar and wrap it around that middle bar and then match up those two holes that you punched out, grab your rivet and then just push your rivet through those holes and snap together. And then I'm gonna grab my rivet press and I'm just gonna set this rivet now. Now take your strap and lay it so that the fold over edge is on the top and then let's straighten this out. Grab a swivel hook and make it so that the clasp side, the swivel side is down and thread this onto your strap. And then fold your strap in half, making sure you're not twisting anything. Push it up through the bottom where the fold over edge is of your strap already. Give it some slack and then over that center bar and down through the other side. So this is how it should look. You have a swivel hook here on the right, folded in there. You have your slider in the center. And then over here on the left, we have an open edge. We're once again gonna mark three quarters of an inch from the short edge, make a dot that's centered on that strap. And then we're gonna measure two and a quarter inch from that same short edge and mark a dot that is centered. And then grab your hole punch and punch those same holes just on the other side of the strap now. And then making sure you know the strap is right side up, so this is what it looks like when it's right side up. Insert your swivel hook so the swivel clasp is up this time. And then fold that short edge over, matching up those holes that you punched, and then insert your rivet through both of the holes. And then add your cap for your rivet. <coughs> Grab your rivet press and set this. All right, so if you made the crossbody strap, this is what it should look like. You can just grab your bag and clip it onto your D-rings. And there we go. Such a cute little crossbody bag with lots of pockets and it's a perfect everyday bag size. I just love this. I love this. I hope you guys do too. All right. <laughs> what do you guys think? It's so cute. Obviously, I don't care if it's August. <laughs> I'm so excited for spooky season. I love the Halloween season so much and I would not consider this like a Halloween bag. This is a Haunted Mansion inspired bag and the Haunted Mansion is 365, okay? It is all year round. I love Haunted Mansion. But this is what I love about this pattern is you have just the perfect number of panels. You don't have too many panels and you try to like mix it up with different materials and you're like, that's gonna look crazy. Like this is just perfect. You, have, you can have a, you know, really crazy print like I do, a really busy print on the front and the back and then a neutral gusset or you can mix it up, change it, flip flop it, have like your neutral on the front and back, use your gusset for that pop, use all one color to make it a very neutral, very chic bag. Uh, I love this. I love this. I especially love how the pattern did it because in the pattern she used, you know, a neutral vinyl for the exterior, just a nice beautiful yellow, but then she put the print as the lining, which I think is so cool. That's another great option if you want the bag on the outside to look professional, but you know, on the inside be kind of a party. So I hope you love making this bag as much as I do. I really, really love it. I've actually made it three times now. The first one I made has already been stolen and taken and it is gone. So I love this pattern so much. I can see myself definitely making a few more of these, especially as we get into the holiday season where we are making bags for friends and family. This size, this shape is a perfect bag for everybody. So if you have somebody in your life who you wanna make a purse for, but you're not quite sure about which pattern to use that they would find useful and like, I would highly suggest this one. The only hard choices you're gonna have then are the material that you use. But the shape of this, the you know usability of this is very, very good. It's for everybody. So I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys.